let's talk about mounted British cavalry formations. First off, all British cavalry units are horsemen, so they will all either have a 12-inch move or charge for their movement action. British irregular cavalry also has the ability to mount or move 8 inches, or move 8 inches and mount as one move it action. Our first formation is the column depicted by the 17th Lancers. As all cavalry units are 12 figures, this formation has a 4 figure frontage and 3 ranks. The column is the primary formation for all mounted cavalry attacks. The regular army 17th Lancers and the irregular Natal native horse, the NNH, also have the ability for the highly effective hit and run attack while in this formation. Here we have Woods Carbineers in a uh, march column. For march columns, you place your unit trays one behind the other, just like this. And we also recommend you inform your opponent that you're using your opponent you're using a march column because it's not used very often. Additionally, you may want to mark your unit with a green arrow for your marker set to avoid any confusion. Similar to infantry units in march column, cavalry units gain four inches to their movement. They also may only engage with one half of their figures if attacked. So you recommend this formation only if your scenario requires it or you want it for your campaign. Shown again are the 17th Lancers, this time in a mounted line formation. This formation is good for shooting regular British cavalry as much of it does not dismount to fight. But this formation does not represent the best use of British Lancers, which is to charge or hit and run attack in column. All right, a little more on British Irregular Cavalry. Here we have the Natal Mounted Police, NMP. On the left is them dismounted with a horse holder, and on the right is them in column. As mentioned earlier, all British cavalry units are horsemen, so don't forget that irregular units have the ability to mount and then make an in inch, eight inch move, or to move eight inches mounted and then dismount. The dismounted line. Here we have our best irregular marksman, the Natal native horse, the NNH. They are in their absolute best formation for using their carbines, a dismounted line. While dismounted, they gain plus two to shooting. Woods Carabiners and the Natal Mounted Police, the NMP, also do well shooting dismounted. They gain plus one to their shooting. This makes all our regular cavalry excellent shots when dismounted. But the NNH were trained by Colonel Dunford and are your best. And of course, we're going to have to just slip him into the formation because we can. Scouting detachments. Yet another advantage to British irregular cavalry is the ability to make scouting detachments for off-board scouting. Your most cost-effective scouts will be the Natal Mounted Police, as we have here, or your Woods Carabineers. You may choose to take one or two movement trays of two figures, like we have here, and use them as a scouting unit. Scouts are usually deployed into one off-board zone, and then each turn they move up to two zones and scout the last one that they enter hopefully finding the Zulus before the Zulus find them. British Artillery. Your British Artillery should consist of at least one 7-pound gun before you take a Gatling gun, then a second 7-pound gun followed by a rocket battery. Some of your artillery will move a bit faster than other artillery. For example, your Gatling guns are considered fast horse, and while your rocket battery is usually moved by a mule. Take this into consideration. All artillery pieces have a four-man crew and a two-figure tray behind it used to represent its ammunition. Limbers are optional. Unlimbered. Well, there are two ways to deploy your British artillery, either unlimbered or limbered. An unlimbered artillery is ready to shoot, so of course that's preferred. 
Here your unlimbered seven pound cannon is represented by simply facing the crew and an artillery piece towards their target. If you choose, you may place a limber team directly behind the piece as I have done, but having a limber is not necessary. The crew being positioned in that method is enough. Unlimbered British artillery may also make a pivot up to two inches without penalty. And how we pivot is pivot the rear of the piece to show your new direction of fire. Limbered. Limbered means your unit is ready to move at their quickest speed, but they are only prepared to move, not to shoot. You should face your crew stand to the rear and place your artillery piece to their rear to represent limbered as shown here on the left, or use a limber team to represent your limbered unit as on the right and place your artillery piece at its rear. Of note, there's no pivot move, but you may snake your movement while limbered.